today's topic, for those of you who tuned in to hear an actual topic and not us chit chat, is the vagus nerve. Mm. I think sometimes there's so much focus on the, the vagus nerve and less focus on the brain and the gut as well. Mm -hmm. And they're both communicating via the vagus nerve and both play a role in basically activating the nerve or, you know, yeah. uh, for us using the nerve. So I do think that that's a key point too. Like before we dive too deep into the vagus nerve, like you do want to also, if there's a brain issue, if there is a gut issue, making sure you're addressing those areas as well and not just focusing on like hardcore on gargling and things like that, that activate the vagus nerve and like a, yep. basically thinking that that's going to heal the whole brain gut axis. Um, and I think that's, I've seen sort of that mentality of late where it's like, okay, all you have to do is just gargle or something and everything in the nervous system is going to be aligned. You know, it's right. kind of like, um, you could almost imagine it like a barbell, like the vagus nerve is just the stick that connects the two weights on either end of the barbell. So you can't just lift the stick a whole bunch of times and things that you're going to get very far. You also need to pay attention to the weight that is on either side of the barbell, right? Um, so I think A, not just focusing on the vagus nerve for the sake of the vagus nerve in isolation while not doing justice to the other two pieces of the puzzle is a worthwhile conversation to have. And what I've seen too, I don't know, you'll have to, you'll have to um, share with me, well you don't have to, but I would like you to share with me your experiences. Um, that sounds so bossy. But I would say <laughs> I've had patients, and I've seen this online too, where people are like, okay, cool, I'm gonna do vagus nerve stimulation, I'm gonna gargle, I'm gonna use a TEDS unit, I'm gonna buy an essential oil, I'm gonna take a supplement, I'm gonna do whatever, but it's almost like there's this effort to like force the vagus nerve to do what you want to do or like muscle your way through like come on vagus nerve do your job darn it but if you are this is so hard to word it's like you can't heal things by forcing your body into doing things and i think that that's especially true for the vagus nerve because a lot of people myself included i think our vagus nerves get fried and our nervous system and our balance gets off kilter because we push through so much in our life. Like we take emotions or things that we should say, but we don't want to, and we just like bottle it up and shove it down. Or we, you know, we wake up and we're exhausted, but we go to work anyway. Or we, you right. know, we're fatigued or like we have a relationship that we are just like done with and we muscle through anyway and we grit our teeth through it anyway. And there's so much of that it, especially in American life, but I think even the world largely, where we are forcing ourselves and forcing our bodies to do things that maybe we shouldn't. And then, you know, if we're doing a lot of that kind of stuff and not being mindful to that, like the stressors that are actually bogging down our vagus nerve, and then we're like, oh, and then I'm going to take this supplement or rub this essential oil on to get, get that silly vagus nerve to do its damn job. It's like, this is like another symptom of the greater issue. Like you're trying to force your way through life in some of these situations that need to be rectified. And also you're trying to like force the vagus nerve to do its job when it just wanted to do its job because it's overwhelmed. And maybe you need to take a pause and acknowledge that like you're overwhelmed too, you're stressed too. Um, I don't know if you've seen that before, but I think this like mentality to just push through and push the vagus nerve to do its job can be a symptom of a greater picture. Right. And I, I think too, uh, I mean, I think what we're saying is, is pretty similar, like even not focusing on the brain or the gut too, and just vote, like going all in on the vagus nerve and like hitting that really hard. I, I think there's like a similar mentality, slight different, but I, I, I see the same people doing this, that where they're kind of just focusing on the, the vagus nerve and yeah. like pushing, pushing, pushing. And you're right, it's almost like if you went from not exercising at all and then you're running, like all of a sudden you're like, I'm just gonna run eight miles and do that seven days a week, your body is gonna get burnt out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely see that. I, I always wonder about that too with things like TENS units and 
uh, some of the vagal stimulators. Like, I don't know how mm. you really calibrate that mm. properly for the individual. And maybe there's a strategy. I just haven't really used those types of devices because they're pretty expensive. And I just, again, I'm, I'm, it's not something I typically use. Mm. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with you there. And I think too, in general, what I've seen um, is starting slow seems to help from a like a soreness standpoint. Like if I had someone doing singing, humming and gargling, what I've seen, if they go too hard, they're like, oh yeah, my throat's sore. Hmm. Like I actually feel sore doing some of this stuff. So I'm like, let's like slow it down a little bit and we can build up a little bit slower when it comes to your vagus nerve. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's so tough because I think that everybody, probably everybody who listens to this podcast, but everybody I've ever worked with, certainly, they want to feel better yesterday. Right. Right. Like, right. Yeah, and it's like, to their credit, a lot of these people are really passionate and excited. Like when they hear of a new thing, they're like, whoa, the vagus nerve and I can stimulate it. Cool. And it's this mentality of like, I want to feel better right now. So they go all in and they do something. But that's why I'm really cautious. And I tell people like, don't go all in. Um, again, A, because you can't trick the vagus nerve. We can right. try to get it to do some push-ups or try to do some bicep curls, but you also need to work on the foundational stuff too. Uh, there's no point exercising one part of your body and then like neglecting the rest of it. Um, right. And I do think the gargling thing's interesting. I definitely utilized that more when I first was working with clients and I still have it as an option of a way to, to activate yeah. the vagus. But I will say compliance is usually pretty low with yeah. gargling. It's not something that people look forward to doing. Um, typically singing and humming is mm -hmm. easier and more enjoyable for people to do as yeah. like a, an activity from what I've found. Yeah. Um, even things like breath, certain breath work yeah. um, tend to be more enjoyable. Yeah. Um, Meditation, so those are, yoga. Right, Right. So I think, again, usually from what I found, I've moved more away from gargling. Um, but I usually am like, you know, gargling works um, if you want to try that, too. So I might give them some different options. But, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen it be an overly compliant uh, area and it's probably like what you're saying just it's not oh. necessarily an enjoyable yeah. pro process and I usually try to pair um, vagal exercises with meals um, mm. as well like I try to if they're gonna do breath work and I don't necessarily say like it's not helpful if you do it outside of a meal mm -hmm. um, because then sometimes they're like, oh, I forgot to do it. And then I just like don't. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's okay. On me. Right. And I'm like, that's okay. Like, it's not a big deal. You can do it outside of a meal. But you might get like a little bit more benefit um, if you do it before a meal just to kind of settle your system down mm -hmm. for a minute. Um, but it, yeah, it's the gargling. The gargling thing is a little bit tricky from what I've seen as a practitioner. It's not necessarily an enjoyable or fun practice yeah. yeah it's not fun that's why i just i lean away from that one in particular i just think like would i do it probably not like <laughs> i might i might do it like diligently for a week right and give it a go and then i would give up probably if it was me um and i think just anything that gets you in that like rejuvenated restful state is going to be good for the vagus nerve basically anything that relaxes you or lets you take a freaking chill pill or brings you joy probably has the ability to improve vagal nerve tone. So again, mm -hmm. like painting the picture of what not to do again, you, you could have a person who is gargling their little heart away or using a TENS unit or trying to boss around their vagus nerve, but then, you know, they're stuck in a miserable commute that they hate, going to work for a boss that they hate, and like they're always rushed and they don't have time and like they're, they're kind of like meh on their spouse. It's like, these are the things like, is is the vagus nerve work going to make a profound impact for that person? Yeah. But if that same yeah. person like makes some shifts in their life, even if it's not getting a divorce or getting a new job, which are huge life changes, even if it's like, have a hobby, like yeah. schedule some, some time in your life and just draw a line in the sand and tell your employer, tell your spouse, whatever, like this is me time. 
I'm going to get acupuncture once a week. I'm going to do painting. I'm going to go, you know, out on a lake. I'm going to, I'm going to do something for myself two hours once a week. Hard no to everything else, but just like have some structured time in your life. Um, I find that if you don't, if you don't schedule time for yourself, it's not going to happen because there's always a million things that you could be doing and emails you could be answering. But if you know, like, okay, Friday, I leave early or Thursday, I leave early at three o'clock because I have a yoga class at four o'clock that I go to in Midtown, whatever, like have that on the calendar and make that your time and don't let anybody else mess with that. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's really what will actually do good things for your vagus nerve, I think. Right. And I think that uh, usually areas that I focus in on and you've hit the nail on the head with them are like connection. Mm -hmm. Uh, So how connected is someone? And lots of times if you're struggling with SIBO and IBS, it's very easy to disconnect because you're either having symptoms or you don't want to go to that restaurant or parties give you stress if there's not food for you. And I get that because I've been there. Um, But even if there's situations that you don't necessarily enjoy, and it's just going to be that way for a little bit, like as your gut's as you're moving forward and gut with your gut health, finding other ways to connect that aren't necessarily food related. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's harder now with COVID. I think COVID's definitely frying some vagus nerves. Um, So I think I always zero in on connection, whether it's like to your immediate family or Mm -hmm. if there's just a a need to connect more. Um, And then I think what you're saying too, like hobbies and having like me time that's yeah. not necessarily connecting to someone else but connecting to yourself in a way yeah. it can be really powerful um i definitely would recommend getting a puppy we were talking about that before <laughs> before this yes. call how now i got one puppy and i want to get a like more and more I, puppies i fully endorse this <laughs> right my husband did not so Nikki it's is fine. telling me yes. yes. I need to get some more yeses on my side. Yes. Everybody, comment in the YouTube below. <laughs> Say yes. Yes, Amy, get that other puppy. Right. So I think that, uh, again, puppy's been interesting for me personally just because I was the holdout, didn't want to get a puppy. <gasps> and I know, I was, the, I was the holdout. I was like, I've never had a puppy, so I just I thought didn't know. I knew you. I know. Continue. Okay, so I we got the puppy and I'm like obsessed with it every morning. We have like a routine that I do where I like kind of wake him up nice, rub him all down. Like I don't try to rush him to like go outside to pee. I just kind of give him some rubs for like five to ten minutes. He finally gets up and goes pee and then we go by his food bowl and usually I'll fill up his food bowl. And before he eats, he'll get a toy and just sit in my lap for like... 10 minutes and then I have the food bowl has food in it and your dog is willingly oh my gosh see we've had beagles and a beagle would (laughs) never do that in a thousand years and I will say sometimes he'll like go and get a mouthful of food and then come and sit on my lap Mm -hmm. until he's done chewing and he might go get another mouthful and sit back on my lap that's adorable Um, not at all what I'm familiar with with beagles oh man (laughs) Well, again, it's it's great, though. We have, like, this little flow to our... But it, like, starts my day off in a very relaxing way yeah. versus just, like, getting into, like, my, like, to-dos, getting breakfast done. Yep. Um, so it, it, like, starts my morning out slow and, like, nice. That's um, nice. So, again, sometimes even just... We always think about, like, the meditations and the breath works, like, all these really sort of uh, structured stress management, vagal toning activities. Mm -hmm. But I think you're exactly right looking at it from a broader standpoint of how is your environment, uh, what everything in your environment that could be conducive to strengthening your vagus is really important to pay attention to. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a number of clients who have used a tens unit before, and mm-hmm. they they've all seemed to like it. I mean, the ones that I I remember using it. So yeah, I've just never been like trained on how to set that up and to yeah. how to do it. Um, but I've always been intrigued by it. So I'm glad you were yeah 
giving up giving some deets out yeah but not all the deets right yeah not all the deets sorry guys um <laughs> yeah and and i think it's not it's not intrinsically dangerous um, right although i will say for a record too when you do the vagus nerve stem with the ear you actually want to do the left ear only because mm -hmm. the right vagus nerve goes to the heart as well as the rest of the innards and the left does not it goes past the heart and it just goes into the innards so you know, just in case you don't want to induce some weird like arrhythmia or, you know, something weird like that. 